Okay, welcome to Opal Tone CX5 for Photoshop CS5. The first step is to install the software. So double click on the installer, follow the prompts. Okay, now the installer will install this Opal Tone CX5 folder onto your Macintosh hard disk root volume. So what you've got to do now is simply drag this folder into Applications, Photoshop CS5, Plugins, and Release. So the hierarchy is Photoshop CS5, Plugins, and drop that Opal Tone CX5 folder into the Plugins folder. That's it. You're good to go. Launch Photoshop CS5. Open an image. Now Opal Tone CX supports RGB, CMYK or LAB file formats in 8 bits per channel. So here we have a conventional CMYK image. To access the plugin, File Automate CX5. That will bring up the user interface. Just to speed up the File Automate CX5 function, we can actually put in a quick uh, keyboard shortcut. Go to Keyboard Shortcuts, open up File, scroll down to CX5 and type in control apple zero as a keyboard shortcut so now we can come in file automate cx5 and there it is control apple zero so doing that through the keyboard to enlarge it just hit on the green button on top left and now you have the, uh, the full view at the bottom, let's just go through the tutorial, the magnification button, you can zoom in up to 100% or 1 for 1 pixels. Using the hand tool, you can scroll the image in any direction you'd like, up and down, to bring the image back to full frame, just reduce it until it fits in the window. The dropper tool, on the top left you'll see the in, in, out and the channels measuring all the colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, red, green, blue. So just measuring density on the fly. You can individually display each channel of course, just like in Photoshop. At the moment, the red, green and blue channels are empty. So let's come down here, you'll see this terminology or this menu option, secondary color addition. And this is pretty straightforward. When, when we click on the red button, green and blue, it'll automatically add the RGB saturation plates to the CMYK file. It does not, I repeat, it does not touch the CMYK data. You are purely adding the RGB graphic separation to enhance the CMYK file. The preview at the bottom, you can show on and off how those plates are going to interact with CMYK. The next function is the term achromatic selection. There's short range black, RGB black and RGB grey balance. Now the short range black does exactly what it says. If you click on that button it will effectively shorten the black plate back through the mid-tone, reducing all the highlights and scum dot that that's associated quite often with the black. This function is typically applied in the flexographic industry where minimum dot issues can um, be exacerbated by the, the flexo process. So just repeating, short range black brings the, the range of the black back in through the mid-tone instead of way down in the highlights. It's been, it's been removed there. The RGB black button, if I select that, it will automatically convert the black channel into red, green 
and blue. So if you look at the dropper here, you'll see 27 black on the right hand side converts automatically to 1515 RGB. Okay. The next function down the bottom here, secondary color swap. So what does that mean? If I turn all the colors on, right now in this background we have 99 cyan and 43 magenta. To get the benefit or the full benefit of the Opal Tone RGB inks, we can actually remove or swap, channel swap the magenta ink for the blue. So as I turn this, turn the RGB plates off, if I select magenta to blue, you'll now see what's happened. The magenta plate of 43% has been channel swapped to the blue channel exactly 43 percent and the effect of that is a much cleaner brighter blue on press than typically cyan or magenta and we can do the same down here with the orange channel swap magenta to red and you'll see 25 percent magenta in this example is channel swapped to 25 percent red delivering a much cleaner brighter orange and finally cyan to green you can see now coming down into this area, where are we? In here, the cyan is slightly less channel swap depending on the saturation of the color, but I'll just turn that on and off again to show you where it's enhanced, more in the lime on the left here. So 32 cyan has been channel swapped down to 11 and the green is kicked in at 22. Now the swap percentage is also related to the total strength of the highest ink, in this case 70% yellow. So that means mathematically it will take 70% of the channel swap and do a channel swap and mix on the fly. So once we have everything in place, I can now turn on the red, green and blue and let's have a look at the extra inks we have by doing the channel swap. So magenta to red, you can see we're getting much more red in the orange, cyan to green, there's more impact in the green, and magenta to blue, a significant difference. So the key to Opal Tone is the more you channel swap the inks into RGB, the more stability the color will be on press. When complete, we can now hit the OK button, and the image now is automatically separated into seven channels, CMYK and RGB. File, save as, and we can call this now CMY RGB. And there you have it, your first opal tone separation. Okay, another function to show you is actually applying a color separation through a Photoshop mask. So I can just apply a mask, window, uh, put a, a soft feather on it, in this case 20 pixels. Using Opal Tone CX, Control Apple Zero, launching the plugin. At the bottom here, this mask button now will become active. Select that mask button icon and you can now see exactly where the separation will be applied with CX. You can change the opacity of the mask if you like, you can change the mask color, hit OK, reactivate the mask and it will apply those settings and hit OK. And there it is, you've now created your first color separation through a uh, Photoshop mask. For further information, please visit opaltone.com. Thank you.